Hey everyone, Dr. Teacher Mom here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on marriage, parenting tips and strategies, English language training and tutorials, and also educational research to help you on being your best self. If you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe. Thank you. So today we're looking at unseen poetry and our learning objective is to be able to explore how poets use language, form and structure in an unseen poem. Let's begin. Our big question today is, does the title of a poem matter? Let's unpick that. Do you think the title of a poem matters. Okay, before we answer that question, I would like you to do something for me. So our do no activity. Look at the following title. The title of our poem today is To a Daughter Leaving Home. To a Daughter Leaving Home. Remember the big question? Does the title matter? Okay, let's find out. I need you to read that title and quickly predict what this title may encourage the reader to think about. So I'll give you a minute and you can just pause the video at any time and then come back to it. So to a daughter leaving home. So we already know that one of the key words in the title is a daughter. So it, it's a parent who is going to be the voice in this poem talking to either the mother talking to the daughter or the dad talking to the daughter who's going to leave home. Our question that we're going to answer as well is really important to know what you're doing before you start to do it. So we already know the title of our poem. Our question that we're going to be using this poem to answer is how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about her daughter? So I would like you to read the question before you read the poem, which we have just done. And then can you highlight the keywords in the question? So the keywords would be poet. So we're looking at how the poet and then the second keyword would be present. And the third is speaker's feelings. And then we're talking about the daughter. So we're looking at how the poet shows us this speaker's feelings. So we're looking at specific words and phrases that link to the speaker's feelings about her daughter. I will now read the poem for you and I would like you to think about the poem and the connections with the title and also the question that we're looking at. And remember the question is, how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about her daughter? To a daughter leaving home. When I taught you at eight to ride a bicycle, lopping along beside you as you wobbled away on two round wheels, my own mouth rounding in surprise when you pulled ahead down the curved path of the park. I kept waiting for the thud of your crash as I sprinted to catch up, while you grew smaller, more breakable with distance, pumping, pumping for your life, screaming with laughter, the hair flapping behind you like 
a handkerchief waving goodbye. So we have an acronym that we're going to use, M-I-T-S-L. That is our acronym. And we're going to think about how much time we're going to spend on this section. What should I do in the introduction? And how should I, should my answers look? What am I going to write in my answers? So we can now infer that the speaker in this poem is female. It's written by Linda Paston. So we can infer that it is a mother um, talking to her daughter. So I've written the rewritten the question for clarity. How does the writer present the mother's feelings for her daughter? What is M-I-T-S-L plus P? Okay, what is that? So M is meaning, I is imagery, T is tone, S is structure, L is language, and P is your personal response. So we're going to go through these different parts of the acronym. So for your meaning, you need to, in your response, be very clear about what is the poem about? That's the first question. What is this poem about? Who is the speaker? So we know from the title that it is about a transition, a coming of age. The daughter is leaving home and we're assessing the mother's feelings about this because she's the speaker. Who's been spoken to the daughter? what is being spoken about right and we have I've just said it's about the daughters leaving home you need to think about the themes the setting or any cultural inferences that you can pick up through the poem and where does the poem get to from start to end so that's all about meaning let's move on to tone so your tone is how would the poem be spoken how would the poem be read would it be an angry tone sad nostalgic bitter humorous etc now let's look at imagery i kind of um switched them but move on to imagery so we're looking at any figurative language and i've put some on for you so it could be alliteration assonance metaphor simile personification onomatopoeia you name it so you need to go through the poem and identify annotate the poem for any figurative devices so that is your imagery. Let us move on to structure. We're looking at the structure of the poem. So your rhyme, is there a rhyme scheme? Are there any couplets? Is there an internal rhyme? We're looking at the rhythm. So how many syllables per line? Is it regular or free verse? Is it in stanzas? Are they different lengths? Lines, how many are there in each verse? Do they stand out? Do we have any examples of, of um, end stopping? So does each line finish at the end of a sentence? Do we have on jumble more? And by on jumble more, I mean, do the lines run on to the next line or stanza? Do we have any example of scissora? And scissora is basically where there's a punctuation in the middle of your line. So you there's an extended pause. Let us look at the language. So what kinds of words are used? Is there connotation, ambiguity, um, double meanings, adjectives? Do we have any inter in any example of intertextuality? By that, does the poem refer to another text as we go? So it's a lot to think about, but that's the way you unpick. And of course, you can't end without a personal response. 
compliment, criticize, or say how you felt about the poem. What was your personal response to the poem? Remember to always link everything to meaning. Ask yourself, how does this contribute to the poet's overall meaning? Ask yourself, why has the poet used this technique? Ask yourself, what effect does this technique give? What is the effect on the reader? So all of those things are really important. So what I would like you to do is go back to the poem, annotate it, right? Annotate it for meaning, imagery, tone, structure, language, and then give your personal response. After you've annotated the poem, please come back to this table and put in your meaning for each. So of course a poem can has, have more than one meaning. So you'd fill that in the table, then you'd give me the imagery that links and the imagery can be evidence from the poem. So complete your table and then come back to the video. So pause it while you're doing this. Okay, now let us go about answering this question. And the question as a reminder, in To A Daughter Leaving Home, how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about her daughter? So we're doing the introduction first and the formula for the introduction is for you to discuss the meaning of the poem and also answer the question. So you're going to link that in your first paragraph. Here is the exemplar. Please use it as a model. You can also magpie bits of it but i would like you to write your own paragraph and as always as always when you have a go at writing your paragraph please write it in the comments below so i can have a look at how you got on okay so in to a daughter leaving home pastin tells a story of a mother of a mother and daughter relationship through the specific event of teaching her child how to ride a bike this event acts as a metaphor for the mixed emotion the speaker feels about her daughter growing up on the one hand she feels joy at her daughter's success but on the other hand a sense of sadness and worry at not being able to protect her daughter and also losing control of the relationship. So we have looked at the meaning. So what the poem is about. We've also answered those, um, the questions about the feelings of the mother. Please have a go at writing your own. So we have done the introductory paragraph. We're now going to develop our response. And remember, we are looking at, and I've put the question on the slide just to remind you, because it's really important to focus your essay on the question. So in To A Daughter Leaving Home, how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about her daughter? We're answering those four questions below. So what feelings are presented? What do different elements of MITSL show? What is the reader's reaction? And what is my reaction? So what is your reaction as you go through the poem? How did you react to it? And it's really important to include that bit about your reaction. Okay, 
In To A Daughter Leaving Home, Paston presents the speaker's feelings of fear and sadness as she watches her daughter ride into the distance. These feelings are presented with the use of a simile, the hair flapping behind you like a handkerchief waving goodbye. To demonstrate how the speaker feels, she's losing her daughter as she grows up. The comparison to a handkerchief confirms the link to sadness as it is associated with wiping away tears. Also, the use of enjamblement in this quote emphasizes the speed of which the speaker feels her daughter is growing up and links to the idea that the speaker is worried that time is moving too quickly. The poet also uses a negative and fearful lexis throughout the poem, wobbled, crashed, breakable, and screaming to highlight the concern the speaker has about the dangers and uncertainty her daughter will face. The presentation of fear leaves the reader feeling sympathy for the speaker because they can relate to a mother and child relationship. And in my opinion, the poet has successfully developed a melancholy tone to help present the paradoxical grief a parent feels at watching their children grow up. So that's quite detailed. It's looked at different elements of MITSL and it also included not only the reader effects, but also your reaction to the poem. Please pause the video here and use this exemplar paragraph to write your own. Please also do not forget to write it in the comments below so I can have a look and give you feedback. Off you go. Okay, let us review, time for review of learning. I would like you to look back at the paragraph that you have just written. I need you to annotate all the times you have commented on an element of meaning in the poem, on an element of imagery, on an element of tone, on an element of structure, on an element of language, and any time that you gave your personal response. So you're annotating your response for M I T S L and P. Thank you for being with me today. As always, if you haven't yet, please remember to subscribe. Please remember to hit that like button and also give a comment. Until the next one, it's Dr. Teacher Mom saying bye bye.